What is up folks, thank you for tuning back into episode 5 of Championship Prep. I know a week has passed by but I've been extremely busy and I wanted to spread out the video. So today we're going to talk about recovery and how you can recover after a championship match. So championship games are very, very exhausting, they're very tough in the body and how you recover after a game is how you prepare for the next game. So especially out here in Toronto, it's like 30 degrees here, training in extreme heat. So recovery is so, so important. And especially with the quick turnaround of championship games here, it can be even more important. Back home in Ireland, if you are beat in the championship off. Back home in Ireland, if you're beating a championship game, then you will have the back door literally a week later. And even at county level, the Monon lads, after winning the game against Down at the weekend, have to play the dubs a week later. So recovery is so important. So I'm going to take you through how I recover and how you should recover as well. You're my music, but you tear me to pieces. So oh, where does it come from? The scene that keeps playing on repeat ignores the rule of thumb. Oh, where does it come from? Oh, where does it come from? So we're back in front of the camera, in front of the white wall behind me. I'm going to give you as much information regarding nutrition and recovery and supplementation. Now I was watching the Mon game last Saturday and they got the win and I have noticed that they were playing Dublin this Saturday. That seven day turnaround is so important for them guys to recover and not only uh, just the Mon lads, obviously the RMI buys as well. So if you're playing championship and you've got, let's say you lose the first round of championship, you've got the back door the following week, you need to recover between them seven days. So I'm gonna to talk to you about the nutrition, recovery, and also supplementation. So the first supplementation I'm gonna talk about is BCAAs. Now I get my BCAAs from my protein. Number one, my protein is an affiliate of mine, so that means I get some of their free product. I give you a discount code. If you want anything from my protein, just scroll down into the discount uh, which is down below in the description box and you can use that across all products and my protein is the cheapest because it is in a bag it's packaged in a bag and it's not packaged within a tub and secondly if you go to labdoor.com that will give you the quality of bcas and my protein is rated very highly and my protein has got one of the best quality of protein out there as well so check that website out if you don't believe me now i'm going to talk about bcas and what are they bcas are simply branch chain amino acids and they also are essential uh, BCAs which means you must eat them your body does not reproduce them your body does not produce them themselves so that is why you like to supplement with BCAs and BCAs are very very important for your recovery in GAA why because they have amino acids that include leucine isoleucine and valine okay the most important one out of those three is leucine which is increasing insulin and it also helps with muscle protein synthesis okay the second one is isoleucine which simply increases energy and then you have valine which actually isn't that important it is actually like helps the other two it basically does what the other two do but it's shown in there as well so they're the main three amino acids within bcas and how much should you take you should take in between four five grams to 20 grams per day. I supplement with BCAs five grams per day. I sip on it during training. I sip on it in the morning time. So if you're fasting for, let's say a long period of like an intermittent fasting where 16 hours of fast of the day, I've done videos on this before. I like to supplement with BCAs. They also taste really amazing with your water. I'm not the best man to get water in. So that's why I put a scoop of BCAs in. And my favorite is blue raspberry. Now, another thing that I want to touch on regarding BCAs is that you do not need them, okay? BCAs are probably like this little 1% of your recovery. Training and nutrition is always the number one factor, but you can get branched chain amino acids with your eggs, your uh, chicken, your meats, your turkeys. If you have a high protein intake each day of over 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight, then you probably won't 
need BCAs, but BCAs come into effect uh, if you are feeling pretty sore after a game, leading up to another game, it's good to supplement with BCAs and it'll also help to get your hydration in as well. Secondly with BCAs, when to use them is that if you're on an extreme cut, if you're trying to lose weight very quickly, then always take BCAs as a supplementation because you're more than likely not getting in enough protein to help muscle growth or repair muscle damage or repair uh, tissue that is being torn apart, the fibers being torn down. So that's when you should use them. That is a one step, one part of the recovery that is very important within GEA players, or even bodybuilding, or even anybody that is looking to cut weight or increase their muscle growth. So that's BCAs out of the way. I think we're going to move on to the next stage, and C is in the pool. Hey, what is up, guys? So obviously this is not the swimming pool. This is my PT room in Good Life Fitness. I honestly just thought it'd be more beneficial if I took you through a workout, like a conditioning workout, rather than me swimming around in the pool. So I do this on recovery days. It's a lot of stretching involved, a lot of mobility, a bit of a sweat, and I really, really enjoy doing these types of workouts. These type of workouts only last for like 15 to 20 minutes, okay? So I just started off my warm-up with, it's called the world's greatest stretch and I do it for one minute and I can find this on the Nike Plus training app and it's really really good you can download the app as well if you like so basically I try to focus on keeping my right elbow to my right knee and opening up my lats my upper back and my lower back and also my hip flexors currently rocking the my protein stringer as well you can get your discount down below and then i went into some heel flicks you probably have been doing these since you were like under 10s in gaelic football every manager probably makes you do these and it raises your heart rate and i try to keep a strong posture and i try to keep my chest sticking out and then i just like to get a bit of a sweat on burn some calories next thing i went up to was the plank but it's a different variation of the normal plank you would see which is on your elbows and this is called a high plank i usually hold this for a minute just try to get the core if you notice i'm squeezing my glutes squeezing my core and keep my legs completely straight at a lovely angle to the floor and then i went on to some bodyweight squats and um, i went for 30 seconds here i basically done as many as i could with proper form within the 30 seconds i picked the pace up a little bit i used my hands out in front of me to keep my posture keep my balance and I try to tell my clients to think that there's a chair behind their bum and as if they're sitting down and keep their chest extremely high and make sure that their knees are going out the way and not meeting towards. Next thing I went to was reverse lunge knee jumps, if you could call them. They're like a plyometric movement. This can help with your speed and also your vertical jump. So I like to involve these in as well started off the left leg and then i went into some mountain climbers for over 30 seconds then again just getting a little big sweat on burn some calories get the heart rate racing and then i went on to did some more body weight squats then after i just upped the duration i did 40 second body weight squats whereas the first set of body weight squats i done was only for 30 seconds so i really tried to get more volume into this set of bodyweight squats i crossed my arms just simply because my arms were getting tired focusing on sitting back as if there's a chair in front of me sticking my chest out as far as i could and keeping my knees going out the way and never meeting in the middle next thing i went on to was some lateral jumps so what i done here is i went down in like a burpee style and then lateral jump this is also like a plyometric movement jumping left to right and then straight into mountain climbers again 40 seconds getting the heart racing there's absolutely no rest in between these exercises it's kind of like a circuit circuit conditioning style workout And then again, I went on to some reverse lunge jumps. 
So really, really trying to focus on driving that knee towards the ceiling, trying to use my glutes, hamstrings, quads, everything I have in my lower body to allow me to increase my vertical jump. And this is where you want to activate the glutes as much as you can midweek whenever you're doing your gym sessions so they can fire uh, properly and make you faster off the mark whenever the matches come around for the weekend. Then went on to some lateral jumps again, you've seen this before, just some burpee style, down, up, jump, trying to explode off the mark. As you can tell here by the video, I am extremely out of breath at this stage and I'm just excited for the end. Finished off with some split squats, did about 10 on each leg, started off with the right leg. My legs are pretty actually fucked here at the minute, so I try to focus on keeping my back nice and straight, good posture, 90 degree angle regarding the knee. Just kind of a finisher to get the burn. So next up is three exercises that I always do for mobility. I have not got any names for these, but they feel absolutely amazing. All I do is, you, the video basically tells the tale. It's very, very good for hip flexors, very, very good for the front of your right quad here. And you kind of push forward with your uh, hip flexor on your left side and really, really get that strain there, as you can see, down the front of the quad. You can do this in your home, you can do this in a gym, anywhere that has a flat wall. Trust me, this is one of the best stretches you can do. Also, if you're a goalkeeper, you need to have loose hip flexors, especially when you're kicking the ball out. And the next exercise is just like a banded, a resisted banded hip flexor stretch. Same again, holding for two minutes on the front of the quad, holding on the hip flexor, pushing that right knee forward ever so slightly, and then focusing on your breathing so you can get a deeper stretch every single time. You probably notice I'm keeping this raw, there's not that much cutting in between the videos. I kind of like watching videos that are really, really raw because it gives you a feel that you're actually working out with the person. So the next one, there actually is a name for this, it's like a couch stretch because you can do it on your couch at home. It's also called the pigeon stre stretch. So I learned this like a couple of weeks ago whenever I joined Good Life, whenever I was watching a seminar. So try and focus on pushing your belly button towards your foot and then back towards your knee. Hold your knee down with your left hand and hold your foot with your right hand. This stretch is crazy good for the hip flexors. I try and do this in between clients. Any five or 10 minutes time I have during the day, I like to try and get this done. This can take up to like six or seven times a day just to ensure that I'm fully mobilized and fully stretched out for a train or for a match. Finally, thank you very, very much for watching this video. If you did like the video, scroll down, give it a thumbs up. It really helps. And I've been getting so much support over the last couple of episodes. I love to keep it going. If you're brand new to this video or you basically haven't subscribed to this channel for some reason, scroll down, make an account, subscribe, because that will help me grow and reach out to a bigger audience. Ricey loves you, as always. See you very, very soon. You're my music, but you tear me to pieces So where does it come from? The scene that keeps playing on repeat Ignores the rule of thumb